I'm Tyler Volk. For years, I've taught about how carbon circulates in this magnificent biosphere in which we all live. I'm making this series of videos to accompany my book, CO2 Rising, and to get the word out about changes going on in the global carbon cycle, changes that will be in the news every year for the rest of our lives. In this first, I want to ask exactly where are these increasing concentrations of carbon dioxide? And how well do they correlate with the locations of the nations that are emitting the CO2? The best place to start is with the longest running record measured directly from the air itself. That honor is shared by two sites. We'll take a look first at data from what surely is the most famous from the big island of Hawaii in the tropical northern hemisphere. Let's go. Hawaii, a small bit of land in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, black igneous rock from recent lava flows, towering waterfalls, and two giant volcanic mountains. One, Mauna Kea, is capped with the famous array of deep space telescopes. I stood on Mauna Kea and looked across to the other, Mauna Loa, famous in its own right for observing not space, but Earth's atmosphere. It was here on the north slope that an infrared gas analyzer was first used by Charles David Keeling in the late 1950s to give precision measurements of CO2 in the air, where today there is a monitoring station of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Here are the findings. I'll show you the data in 10-year chunks. Right away, within the first few years, it was evident that CO2 was on the increase. Before these measurements, no one knew what was happening to the CO2 in the waste emissions from fossil fuel combustion. These emissions were ejected into the atmosphere, and Hawaii is far from the continents where the fossil fuels are being burned. Despite what the oceans or land plants might be absorbing, Finally, there was direct evidence that much of the waste CO2 remained in the atmosphere. Note the units for the concentration of CO2, parts per million, or PPM for short. It may not seem like much, but CO2 is a greenhouse gas. In the way that food coloring, just a few drops, changes the look of a clear glass of water, a little greenhouse gas changes the radiation budget for the Earth, and thus affects climate. Now for those 10-year chunks of data from Mauna Loa. The CO2 concentrations kept going up and up, and they continued to do so. But how specific is this increase to the location of Hawaii? After all, most of the CO2 is injected into the air by industrialized nations located in the northern hemisphere. What is happening elsewhere? Back in the late 1950s, air monitoring equipment was also set up at an observatory near the South Pole. Hardy scientists and technicians braved the elements there, all for data and understanding, and some adventure. This fellow seems to be in the wrong hemisphere. How does the CO2 data at the South Pole, as far away as possible from the northern hemisphere's industrial emissions, compare to the data from Mauna Loa on Hawaii? I've duplicated the entire set of Hawaiian data and faded it into gray so the data from the South Pole stand out as black on top. Some data are missing from the first 10 years, but already you see hints of what is to come. The CO2 concentrations at the South Pole are about equal to those at Hawaii. What does that mean? We'll move forward in time, as before, in 10-year chunks. The South Pole data also show increasing CO2 concentrations. One difference is that the annual swings up and down are much smaller than the swings so evident at Hawaii, a fascinating feature of the global carbon cycle that I plan to discuss in another video. But here's the main point. The CO2 concentrations at the South Pole are very close to the averages at Hawaii. Now, most of the CO2 is dumped into the northern hemisphere, but that hemisphere does not keep the waste gas. It is spread around the world. 
the Earth's winds are like a mix master, a blender, swirling the CO2 from the northern to the southern hemisphere, so that the concentrations are increasing just as much at the South Pole as at Hawaii. Is this finding truly general? Because of the importance of this data and the fact that the differences can be used to understand the global carbon cycle, the U.S. government, as well as other nations, established monitoring stations at many sites around the world. Two more early ones were at Barrow, Alaska, in the high northern hemisphere's Arctic, and at American Samoa, in the tropical southern hemisphere. So we now have the northern hemisphere tropics, represented by Hawaii in green, and the South Pole in dark purple, both of which you have already seen. And, new to be added, the Arctic in blue and the Southern Hemisphere tropics in red. Check. The CO2 is indeed increasing at the same rate everywhere. Again, the annual swings up and down are notably different. But the averages lay one on top of the other. And this is true for all other sites around the world. It's one well-mixed global atmosphere. The data have spoken and are perfectly clear. The CO2 is increasing everywhere equally at the same pace. So say I right here, right now, we're able to put somehow a billion tons up into the sky. The CO2 starts spreading around from the mixed master atmosphere, swirled and stirred, and there's increasing concentrations here and at the top of the local mountain. It goes all the way into the southern hemisphere and all the way to the south pole at the same amount, which means all locations on Earth are going to experience the same increased greenhouse effect from my carbon dioxide that I put up right here. This fact, which is well recognized by carbon cycle scientists and by policymakers who are studying the situation, is clearly of fundamental importance for how we as a global society are going to deal with the problem in the future. Goodbye.